Well, Mr. Noble, it seems the ghosts of Tombstone are not going to let me go in peace. Maybe it is time to tell the story of that town. The way it really happened. It was around the fall of 79 when me and my brother Jim left Kansas with our women and headed for Arizona. And Doc and his woman, Kate, hooked up with us. And contrary to the stories you may have read, we didn't look, leave looking for gunfights. We left looking for business opportunities. Well, as it turned out, we found both. We hooked up with Virgin Alley in Prescott. Morgan and his wife, Louisa, came down from Montana, and we all headed for that rich silver strike in Tombstone. Oh, correction. Doc and Kate stayed behind there at the Palace Saloon to play out a winning streak. I was riding shotgun for Wells Fargo to protect the payroll when we arrived, and my impression was good. But it did not take long to learn that that town was full of land fraud, claim jumpers, crooked politicians, and cattle rustlers. Well, the bad element had all got there early, and they were all in cahoots, and they weren't accustomed to interruptions by authorities. Fact is, no one was sure who the authorities were, including the authorities. Oh, troubles got handed around like hot potatoes. A particular problem would belong to Mexico, or it might be Arizona's, or then it might belong to New Mexico. You add to this the usual meddling by the federal government, and you've got a town ripe for corruption. So after a lot of violence and lawlessness, on one fateful day, a man came up to Virgil and said the Clantons and the McClowries were in the Dunbar Corral and fixed to head toward that OK Corral and that he had better go down there and disarm those men. Virgil asked me and Morgan to assist them. And Doc insisted on coming along. I know as we walked down there, we all knew what we were facing. But Virgil was going down there to disarm those men. Morgan and Doc they didn't have a clear head between them. Doc was there for the killing. Me? Oh, I don't recall, but as we turned the corner of 4th and Fremont, there stood the Clantons, the McClarys, and Sheriff being in the vacant lot by Fly's photo gallery. And get it right, Mr. Noble, this is where the gunfight occurred. Well, the OK Corral was on Allen Street. None of us ever got that far. Sheriff Bean ran up to us, so he disarmed those men. We could see that to be a lie. There stood Frank McClary and Billy Clanton with their weapons in plain sight. So we shoved on past them. Virgil ordered, throw up your arms. We've come to disarm you. But Frank and Billy laid their hands on their weapons. And then Virgil yelled, hold, I don't want that. Frank and Billy drew their weapons, and I think Doc opened the ball, but in that instant I knew it was kill or be killed in a fight for life. Billy leveled his gun at me, but I had Frank McClowry because I knew he was the more dangerous shooter, and Billy and I fired at the same time. Some four shots had gone off, and Ike Clanton ran over, and he grabbed me by the left arm. I could see he wasn't healed, so I shoved him off, and I said, this fight's commenced, get to fighting or get away, and with that, he ran off like the coward he was, and in less than 30 seconds, Frank, Tom, and Billy lay dying. Morgan was hit through the shoulder, Virgil through the leg. Doc was grazed. He seemed disappointed. Only I was unhit, and Ike was still running. A few moments later, some armed citizen vigilantes came up and helped Morgan and Virgil to their homes, while Frank, Tom, and Billy finished dying. Billy Clanton was only 19 years old. Sheriff Bean came up to me, tried to arrest me. I told him I wouldn't be arrested, but I was there to answer for what I'd done and I wasn't leaving town. Well, now things are really getting ugly. Ike Clanton was found and taken into temporary protective custody to prevent his lynching. I had hoped things would settle down, that we could get back to our business, but it wasn't to be so. Well, no. Violence has its own momentum. Everyone was scared and nervous. The citizens were afraid the cowboys were going to shoot up the town and everybody was divided into armed camps. To some folk, me and my brothers were heroes, while to others, we were cold-blooded killers. <laughs>